Welcome back to our final Wednesday in the Word on the book of Ephesians. So we've made it through the book of Galatians. This is the sixth chapter of the book of Ephesians. If you've hung with me all the way, we've almost got two books down and we are ready to turn the corner into the book of Philippians next. But before we go there, Paul really summarizes the whole letter to the church at Ephesus with a powerful statement about how we can advance in the kingdom of God. We see here in the first verse, children obey your parents in the Lord for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise so that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy long life on the earth. Fathers do not exasperate your children. Instead, bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. So just a reminder that here, chapter six is a continuation from chapter five. And last week we focused on the relationships that Paul introduced to us. And that reminder that anytime you're in a relationship, there has to be sacrifice and there has to be submission. There has to be yielding to one another and protection of one another for oneness to happen. So Paul's just carrying that forward now and reminding that the very first relationship that we all had to deal with was as child and parent. And what's really important as he introduces this here is this concept, the first commandment with promise. It's the first directive. It's the first opportunity he gives us to be obedient in order to earn a promise. And a promise is a pledge, right? An assurance or announcement of good saying that if you follow these things, there will be a promised blessing. And there's many things in scripture that God puts in our hands saying, if you do something, then I will do something. Then I will fulfill my promise that comes as the reward for you doing that action. God tells us that he rewards those who diligently seek him. So when he says this is the very first commandment with a promise, he's saying as children, our very first opportunity to be obedient to the things of the God and earn a reward started early in life. But everything that we have is to serve our heavenly father in the same way and to realize what he's asking us to do and then choosing to do it. And notice it's not just an obligation upon the children. He also says, fathers, really think about how you are training and teaching and instructing and thinking your children. Make it easy for them to be obedient because obedience brings reward, right? Actions, the choice to honor, the choice to instruct is going to bring forth the results that God is promising in his word. But we have to follow the commandment in order to bring the promise forward. He continues in this same light, not just in family relationships, slaves obey your earthly masters. Now think of this in an employee boss type of relationship. There are people of authority in our life and we are subject to them. But he says, obey them with respect and fear and with the sincerity of heart, just as you would obey Christ. Think about everyone who has that position of authority in your life as someone that God has allowed to be there. In the same obedience that you provide unto Christ, you're gonna have to provide that respect and sincerity of the respect that God has for them being in that position in your life. So right again, we are back to the sacrifice and submission. In chapter five, he talked about the relationship of the church to Christ. He talked about marriage. Here he is bringing it back saying it's the same type of relationship in honor and respect between an employee and a boss. It says, serve wholeheartedly as if you were serving the Lord, not people, because you know that the Lord will reward each one for whatever good they do. Notice that commandment with promise, serve, yield, give your very best, even if folks don't deserve it, because the Lord will reward each when we choose to do good with it. That's a promise that comes as a result of us being obedient to God's word. It says, the Lord will reward each one for whatever good they do, whether they are slave or free. 
it doesn't matter what the relationship is. Of course, none of us always like to have to be submitted to someone who is over us, but whatever our state and condition, choose to do good. And masters, treat your slaves in the same way. Do not threaten them since you know that he who is both their master and yours is in heaven and there is no favoritism with him. There's no respecter of persons, meaning he's gonna judge the master for how he treats people, just like he's gonna judge the slave by how responsive they were to the direction that was given. He's gonna judge the bosses, he's gonna judge the employees, he's gonna judge the leaders, he's gonna judge the followers. Are you being right in your heart and are you choosing to do good when you have the opportunity to do good? Now to do good, right, what does that mean? That just means doing the just thing, the right thing with a pure intention, equaling or being responsive to God's word. We're doing good when we do what God asks us to do. And this obedience he's asking us to have is really that submission, putting your opinion under someone else's opinion and instruction. You might not always agree with it, but if there is it's their right and privilege to make it, and there's nothing illegal or harmful about it, being prepared to hear, to listen, to conform, to go with the expectations that are laid before you. And he says, do this as unto God, serving him and not people. Some translations talk about eye service, right? Just doing good when people are watching you, saying that you're going to do something, but not doing it. Those are things that Paul are saying, you have to avoid that because that's not good. That's not right. Do what you are going to do from your heart. Do it in a genuine intention. Don't worry about whether eyes are on you or not, but do the good from your heart as to the Lord. Right? And if we're doing right unto God, this is where we start doing right unto others. And when we are treating others right, God is going to follow through and reward that as well, as if we were doing it unto him. These are his commandments with promise. Do right under my word. Try to do right to other people. And I'm going to reward that good in the end. And he says, finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Think about that statement itself, being strong, not in our own strength, but in the Lord. And the understanding of God's mighty power is what gives us that strength, knowing that the God of power is going to move on our behalf. So we have that knowledge about the Lord. We have this knowledge of his power, but because of this, he tells us then to do an action, right? We have a commandment that comes with the promise again, Put on the full armor of God so that you can stand. You can take your stand against the devil's schemes. You can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground and after you have done everything, to stand, to continue to stand. Notice this is a commandment with promise. There's actions we have to do because we know the Lord is mighty. And when we take our stand, he's telling us that we are going to then prevail against these rulers, authorities, against powers of the dark world and spiritual forces in heavenly realm. We will be able to stand in whatever evil day comes against us. We'll stand our ground no matter what happens. Powerful, powerful promise of God. So first it says, you know, put on. That means we're going to have to take and put on this armor. So we have to understand what it is and how we put it upon ourselves because it's what's going to help us stand against evil. Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place. And that breastplate protects your heart. And with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. Wherever you walk in, your feet are prepared to walk in with a peace and understanding. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith 
with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Now, as a reminder, these are things we're supposed to take and put on ourselves. And if we take and put it on ourselves, then we're going to be able to stand against the evil that comes our way. Now, I want to highlight this. All of these items are really related to the knowledge of the word of God. Some people will just say, I put the breastplate on. I put on these different elements of the armor. But he's saying, ultimately, you have to understand the word of God. And the word of God is what gives us that understanding of truth that we buckle around our midsection, that we ground ourselves in. It is the word of God that gives us that uh, strength of truth that holds everything together. That's how we know what truth is in the spirit inside of us in our midsection yields to that truth, teaches us that truth. The Holy Spirit will always move with the word of truth that is being presented. And that righteousness, our right standing with God, we have to cover our heart with that. And we get the understanding of our righteousness, again, from the word of God and how it trains us and teaches us what it means to be right before God. And the word also gives us the understanding. It's the gospel of peace. And if we understand the power of God and who we are in Christ, then we can have that peace no matter whatever situation. We are ready to walk into challenging times and to keep our peace when we know what the word tells us about our peace. Then we take up that shield of faith. And faith, right, the substance of things hoped for, the confidence in things you hope for the evidence or the assurance of things you don't see. And you can have that confidence and assurance only because the word tells us what we can hope for. And faith comes by hearing the word and understanding what the word is promising you. And when you understand that, then that's when you have that shield of faith you are able to put up against the enemy and what the enemy is trying to tell you. Take the helmet of salvation. Helmet goes on your head. It's the knowledge of your salvation and what God has blessed you with. And the sword of the spirit, that means you've taken the word and you have the ability to fight using a sword back against the enemy because it is the word is a sword that rightly divides, that helps give discernment, that separates out the evil from the good and to use that sword. So these are all actions we're supposed to take and they are all founded in the word of God. Carries on with verse 18 and pray in the spirit on all occasions. So we go from studying the word so that we can put it on and apply it to every situation to praying in the spirit on all occasions. Whatever comes up, you gotta turn to God. And it says pray with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Pray also for me that whenever I speak, words may be given me so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. So here's a plea that Paul is making. Remember to pray for me while you are praying for any in all things, for everyone else, going back to the parent-child relationship, the husband-wife relationship, the church body of Christ relationship, pray on all occasions, bring in God's spirit, bring in God's influence. So we've put on the armor and we have the knowledge of how to be protected and strong. We're also going to pray in all occasions. And if we do these two things, we are then prepared to do the commandment with promise. We're prepared to stand with the promise we will be able to prevail against the evil day. We will be able to prevail and quench the fiery darts. And so I've broken this down just an ease to kind of remember it, what it takes to stand, right? We have to know the scriptures because the scriptures determine what you stand on and for. Right, the scriptures are telling us what we have to believe, think, speak, and act on in this world as an expression of our faith. We also have to trust God and trust what we've been learning throughout Ephesians that He rewards the good and the obedient, that the commandments, if they're followed, bring forth the promise. We also have to know our authority against the spiritual forces. Right? It just told us, put on that armor, armor and that knowledge because the enemy can only get to you if you don't know 
what the word of God has given you. If he can convince you of something different than what God says, that's what happened in the garden. That's what happens against us every day when the enemy is telling us things or appears bigger and stronger than he is because we don't know the authority to cast down those imaginations and stand against those powers and the spiritual wickedness in high places. And we're going to stay near him, right through the word, get close to him because you need to know those scriptures. You're going to have to be near him and know what his ways are and his will. You're going to need to get near him because it said pray in all occasions, turning to God so that he can instruct you, give you peace, give you confidence. And D, when you stand, you have to declare your status with confidence. Declare it as true because faith, remember, is the shield. It's our shield of faith, and it will protect us when we are confident in what God has promised us. And we also need to be able to boldly wield the sword of the Spirit, the Word of God, in battle to get our victory. And that comes out of the declarations of our Word, of professing and releasing spiritually everything that God's Word has said. We can read it in the Bible and see what it says, but until we own it for ourselves and say, I'm going to step in and do what God called me to do, and I'm going to be confident that the promise is going to happen. So this is what Ephesians 6 is teaching us. When he tells us to stand, he also has taken the time to instruct us on how to stand and how to be victorious. So he summarizes then this set of letters right with a personal touch. Tysicius, the dear brother and faithful servant in the Lord, will tell you everything that so you that you also may know how I am and what I am doing. I am sending him to you for this very purpose, that you may know how we are and that he may encourage you. So just notice all six chapters. There were some tough things that Paul had to say. There were some times where he was challenging their behavior, their anger towards one another, the sin they had allowed in, but the bottom line throughout this book, and you can see how he's ending, is about encouragement, about understanding your identity and power and rights and privilege in the kingdom of God. And he said, here's just a short letter Somebody's going to follow and tell you even more, and he's coming to encourage you. And he finishes with a blessing, as they were so good about doing then, and something that is a heritage that we should continue to do as well, saying peace to the brothers and sisters in love with faith from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace to all who love our Lord Jesus Christ with an undying love. Peace, love, grace. Those are the blessings. Those are the gifts within the kingdom of God. Those are the blessings that we have the opportunity to share with each other as the brethren. And if we understand our relationship with each other, because it's model on relationship that God has between Father, Son, Holy Spirit, then we can easily honor one another, whatever that relationship might be. So this really summarizes. And again, congratulations if you have made it all the way through the book of Ephesians with me. Blessings and I'll see you next week.